uh, HTTP is a fantastic protocol and it does so much right and it got so much right uh, you know 25 years ago now um, or so 20, 20 something years ago uh, it's a fantastic protocol and it'll continue to do great stuff for the for the internet um, and we'll continue to use it for a long time the same way that we use today still things like FTP and so on um, but there are some issues in how HTTP works that are not scaling um, with our uses of the network uh, and our uses of, of the web in general. Uh, and in particular, uh, actually, I think in terms of how websites are represented or how websites store data on the internet, um, HTTP is actually not a very good system for, for doing this. Um, you would want to be able to have a protocol which allows you to reason about how the data moves, which perhaps has some um, has you, you you want some certain properties and the links that you have between between computers, things where you're able to check integrity or where you're able to um, have some cryptographic uh, guarantees around things. You you want to be able to perhaps have signed links and things like that. Um, and just in general, the the client server you know, single link model of HTTP uh, doesn't really work when you think about how big the network is today uh, and how you can leverage uh, connectivity between hosts uh, when, on every single request, right? Like when, when you're able to, um, if you're downloading some big file, uh, you don't just want to download it from a specific uh, location. Uh, you want to be able to leverage whoever else has this file in the same way that BitTorrent uh, Swarms, for example, uh, achieve this great network performance, uh, you want to have peer-to-peer -peer sharing of the bandwidth load uh, of uh, downloading a website or something. Um, so in that regard, I think like the, the core problem with HTTP is that it's location addressed. So when you look at a URL, uh, the very first part of a URL um, so it's, it's a protocol, but then after that, it's the, the location. So it's the IP address or the domain name which maps to an IP address. And that location identifies a specific set of computers that will serve uh, whatever resource you're requesting, which presents a really big problem if you can't talk to that set of computers, right? If there's some problem in the network between you uh, or the network is slow uh, or you're just completely disconnected, uh, you just cannot access that resource at all. Um, and that resource may have certain properties, like it could be a file that hasn't changed in 10 years, and yet you still can't access it. And this problem gets worse when you think about how quickly websites disappear. So there's this um, really short lifespan, lifespan to, uh, to websites. I think uh, some people give figures around 100 days. I think that's, that might be too intense. Uh, but in general, tons of websites disappear all over the, all over the place and they change and move and so on. And so all these links become uh, stale or broken, uh, broken entirely sometimes. Sometimes you can't find data in anywhere um, except on, say, the Internet Archive, who's been you know, graciously trying to back it up as much as possible because they realized this problem early on and they've been trying to like make backups of everything. But you know, there's just a tremendous amount of data and we can just improve how the network works to um, just make those backups sort of automatic.